Okay, how to run 1730 for 5K, and then how to progress on from there to get to 15 minutes for 5K, which is an elite time for 5K. And it's gonna feed into the rest of your running really well. Now, you don't have to be at those levels. You can apply this thinking and this philosophy to whatever time you're currently running, whatever time you're aiming for, and then the big goal in the future. Where I'm at right now is I ran a 5K on Sunday and it was 1845. So that's 3.45 per kilometer. So the short-term goal is, okay, I think I can hold 3.30 per kilometer, which is 17.30. And the way I'm gonna do that is obviously specifically training for, in the intervals and the long run, for that 3.30 pace, which is gonna feed into the bigger goal of running Abu Dhabi Marathon in 15 weeks in a good time. But I've gotta be looking constantly at the 5K and at that top end pace, which for me needs moving. I've got a strong base. It's always pretty solid as long as I keep on top of it. Add cycling as we get into October. So that's gonna be added hours on the bike, added hours to the base of the triangle. The top end speed is what I'm really lacking at the moment. So I need to focus on the 5K and improve that. But this is how I look at it. If I can get to 1730 and be confident at running comfortably 330 per kilometer for 5K, then I look at it very simply like you got 330 per kilometer, 320 per kilometer, which is my old marathon pace, 310 per kilometer and three minutes per kilometer. So let's do the maths. 330 per kilometer would be 1730 for 5K. 320 per kilometer would be 1640 for 5K. 310 per kilometer would be 1550 for 5K. And three minutes per kilometer would be 15 minutes. So what I'm looking at, and this is how I've always ran. As soon as I got into running and ran, just dipped under and really struggled for 10K, but just dipped under 40 minutes. Even though I had to stop three or four times in that race and it was awfully paced, I just thought if I can make this comfortable and I can just elongate the distance and gradually get to 100K, I should be there or thereabouts in the world for 100K. And it's exactly what I did. So this is proven, it's tested and proven, okay? So this is what I would do. And I'm not asking myself to do anything crazy here. The biggest gap is gonna be from 1845 to 1730. But once I've got that 1730 under control, and we'll come to the training in a second, then from 1730 to 1640, literally from 330 per kilometer to 320 per kilometer, I'm just asking myself to go a second faster per 100 meters. And maybe it's easier for you to look at it like that. Just asking 10 seconds per kilometer faster. And if you build in intervals and you build in the progressions well enough and it's solid and you can see yourself moving forward, not every week, but every three weeks, every four weeks, and you're starting to see a little bit of progress, that compounds over 13 weeks or over your 11 and a half week session and your taper to make you into a completely different animal. And the less experience that you've got with interval training, the more powerful this is gonna be for you. So here's just five sessions that I would train towards the 1730, which is the immediate goal within sort of four to five weeks. I would look at, okay, your typical 400s, 800s, kilometers, 300s, and then five minute reps. So longer and shorter reps and working at these paces. And this is the important part because what we've got to do is we've got to spend time at the pace that we want to achieve for 5K. 5K is not easy and to do it all out and to really go for it, you're on the limit for the entire time. It's one of the most difficult distances. And in order to make that comfortable for the entire 17 minutes and 30 seconds, I've got to be also comfortable at going faster than 3.30 per kilometer. So those shorter reps, I'm going to be doing faster and then as I gradually build up and the body gets used to it, and I'll talk to you about the telltale signs of kind of overdoing it, overcooking a session, and how you do it right in order to let the body soak in as much as possible, then the more time you spend at faster than that 5K pace, the easier it's gonna seem, and therefore you can hold it all together for three, 4K, and then let rip in that final kilometer and hopefully make time. And the more time that you make, you get towards sort of 17.15 or 17.10, you're not gonna do wild things. You're not gonna go 30 seconds faster in that final kilometer. But if you can take quite a lot of time over it, all of a sudden mentally, ah, it's not too much of a leap to get to 16.40. So that's really where you wanna be. So although we're starting a training for 17.30, we're also keeping an eye on the next goal after there. So what I wanna do for that, if it's the 400 meter intervals, I know that 400 meters in 80 seconds is 320 per kilometer. 
And so I want to get comfortable at running a bunch of 400 meters, might be 10 to begin with, then 12, then 15, then 20. The more I can do, the better, but at 320 pace. Now it might feel really comfortable. If we can run 18 minutes or 18.45 for 5K, it might feel really comfortable to run 320 pace for just 400 meters. But if you keep those 80 seconds laps or those 80 second intervals, if you're doing it on a treadmill or if you're doing it outside in the tarmac, just 400 meter rep or an 80 second rep on the tarmac is perfect because that's the surface we're gonna be competing on. That's the surface we're gonna be doing the time trial or the park run or the 5K, whatever you wanna say. The all in run club is what I wanna say. And then from there, we'll do 800 meters and we'll try to keep the same pace. So that will be more of a struggle as it's a longer rep. We'll always keep the 60 seconds rest as a, as a recovery. So that again, we're teaching the heart rate to go from high to low and recover as quickly as possible. And we'll split that up as well. So we're doing reps of 800 meter with 60 seconds rest in between and trying to keep those at about two minutes 40, which is your three minutes 20 pace per kilometer. And then I would work with thousand meter reps. So kilometer reps, and hopefully you can do six or seven of those. And again, you're holding on to that 320 pace. So you're going faster for a total of six or seven kilometers, then you're going to go on race day. And it's going to make race day feel a lot more comfortable. It's gonna make that all out effort feel in control for as long of that 5K as possible. Then what I would do is nip, just, just dig in and, and hit some top end speech. To go back to 250 or 300 meter reps, what I used to do, one of my favorite sessions, was just to do 333 meter reps. So you can program that into your Garmin and just do a bunch of those and try and hit a minute for each rep or just do minute reps and try and hit 333 meters, which is three minutes per kilometer. And so if you're running and if you're training for 1730 5K, then it should be within your reach to run, it might take time, but it should be within your reach to run a minute and hit that three minutes per kilometer pace. It's gonna to feel top end, and maybe you just wanna do 12 or 15 or 20 times a minute to begin with, but you'll see that volume creep up over the weeks and you'll see that you're able to do, okay, I was able to do 12 and that felt like, I could do another couple, but that was it. Now I can do 15 and now I can do 20 and now I'm kind of feeling really comfortable at 3.30 per kilometer pace and then you're ready to do the all out effort for 5K. What I'd also put into there is five minute reps and they may be your 5K pace. And so you're building time in five minute reps or longer reps where you're building time at the pace that you're gonna be aiming for. And it's important to do that because if you're coming, if you're starting from a point where you've not done interval training before, you've done very little of it before, or you did it a long time ago, but it's in the distance, then a lot of the time, the feedback that I get from athletes is, I'm starting to feel it in the hamstrings because I'm doing too much quick stuff, too, too fast. And of course you're gonna feel it in the hamstrings because essentially those initial speed sessions should be skill sessions because we're teaching our body to run in a different way to what we've been used to. Even if we've kept it consistent for the last few years, unless we've been dedicated to speed and hills or both ideally, it's gonna be a bit of a shock to the system. So we don't just say, okay, we're going to try and hit a certain pace in a certain distance. We've gotta let the pace and then the heart rate come to us it might not be easy initially to get the heart rate up for a short rep because you're, you're physically, you just don't have the biomechanics to move over the ground fast. It's got to be practice in order to make you into that person who can run 333 meters in a minute. It's very important to be able to do that. So initially, if you're the person at 20 minutes for 5K and that's four minutes per kilometer, it might be that you can do 250 meters in one minute and that pace already feels like top end because you've not done intervals before and the only time you do go fast is when you've done the park run or the 5K. So again, you've got to let the distance come to you. So that 12 times one minute might initially be 250 meters, but might turn into, okay, I can do 15 now. And guess what? I've got that to 300 meters. So that's around about three, maybe three, 10 to 320 per kilometer. And then you're in a position where okay, now I'm ready, I'm about ready to go and, and go for this all-in time trial. And then you get to a point where, okay, the training, you understand the training, you understand a little bit about the progressions, ideally work with a coach if you can, can implement all this for you, work with you, get an idea of how you're feeling for these sessions, when to pull back, when to kind of back off, and when to really push it. And if you're pushing hard enough, how that looks, and it's a very holistic view, but that's a simple way to get yourself to a much faster time because you're dedicated 
and you're focused on the goal and all the training, the interval specifically and the long run, but the recovery run, the easy run, all of that training is dedicated on running, you running a faster 5K, but you're keeping your eye on your endurance and your stamina so that you're looking at the long term as goal. I'm looking at the goal for Abu Dhabi Marathon and running a quick time for that. What that time will be at the moment, I don't know. But this 5K will be a great indicator as to what I'm capable of them running in five, six weeks for 10 miles. And that will give me an indication of, okay, how did that feel? Where did it, where did it get tough? Where did it go wrong if it goes wrong? And then what do I need to do to course correct to get myself on the start line for Abu Dhabi Marathon and run a decent race? So yeah, hope you got something from that. If you've got any questions, pop them in the comments below.